What's going on everybody? It's the EV engineer and today I'm excited to show you my remote control robot which I've been working on uh, recently. It has an ESP32 connected to an HBridge PCB and I have the ESP32 running a web server which is controlling the motors. So in this video I'm going to be uh, showing a quick demo of uh, the motors actually spinning and responding to my commands and I'm going to be sending those commands from a Python script uh, through a Python console. So, so my goal of this video is to show you this pretty cool Python console that I wrote, uh, which is just going to send these HTTP commands. And uh, as an added bonus to this video, I'm going to show you how I actually made this Python script in less than five minutes using ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT is, you know, all the craze nowadays, but honestly, it's super effective at writing Python uh, extremely quickly. And something like this might have taken me, you know, like an hour or two, um, maybe not an hour, maybe like 30 minutes without ChatGPT, but with it, you know, I got this thing working in less than five minutes. So every developer should consider expanding their toolbox. So I'm gonna quickly show you um, what I was able to come up with in such little time. So just to show that this is in fact connected to my Wi-Fi. We can see here the robot, which is elegantly placed on a glass mug that I have, uh, does not have any cables whatsoever going into my computer. So this is completely wireless. It is powered on and it is running a web server, which I can connect to with my Python console, which is in the bottom right. So if I just run my Python script, we get the control terminal pop up. And I'm just going to use the W, A, S, and D keys to drive the robot. So if I press W, we're going forward. Q to stop. If I press A, we're going left. Q to stop. If I press D, we're going right. Q to stop again, and then S, and we're going backwards. So we have full directional control of this robot completely remotely from this Python terminal here. So I've connected my robot to a USB cable going into the computer. And what this will do is it will allow us to see the logs of the ESP32 as it's trying to uh, respond to requests. And the way we can do this is by running uh, idf.py uh, monitor. I don't need to flash the firmware because it's already on there, but monitor p and it's in com6. So if I run this command, uh, we are now uh, getting the output from the ESP32 device. And so what this does is it prints the IP address, which is actually how I was able to, um, to connect to this device in the first place. Uh, and then with my serial uh, Python console, uh, the controls script, um, I use that IP address to send HTTP to my robot. So for example, here it says RC robot control terminal, use the WASD keys to control motor direction. So I'm gonna press W and look at this. You can see in the logs, it says uh, found header request. Oh, well, I don't know why it says request header lost, but going straight. So now I'll press Q, stopping. Let's press A, turning left, Q, stopping, D, right, uh, Q again, so you can see that we're getting uh, pretty helpful logs here uh, from the actual ESP32. So that's pretty cool. Um, that wraps up the demo. So now what I'm going to do is I'll actually explain how I was able to come up with this code so quickly. Um, and to do that, I'm going to actually uh, pull up my conversation with ChatGPT uh, because it is quite interesting how I was able to use that uh, to write this script. So to begin with, I'm just going to show you the conversation that I had with ChatGPT. I said, send a get request Python. I didn't even spell send right, but it knew what I was talking about. And it just spat out a pretty generic uh, HTTP request template. And you know, this is all just boilerplate code. Uh, but then I realized, you know, I don't really want these HTTP requests to be like slowing down the terminal. I want something nice and fast and snappy. So that was one issue. But the other issue I wanted to solve was I didn't want to use just the generic uh, input command from Python because what that does is if you uh, if you use input in your script, it'll completely stop everything and wait for the user's input. 
and it won't be able to do anything else in the background. It just completely stalls the program, uh, you know, which makes it pretty, uh, uh, which doesn't make it very, you know, fast and responsive. You have, you have to press your key and then press enter to keep going. I want something that'll just respond like quickly. Like for example, if I, if I have this running, I just press uh, W, Q, A, whatever. Like it doesn't have to wait. If I change this to uh, input, then I have to do like W and then enter. A and then enter, S and then enter. So that was annoying. So I asked it, okay, how do I get input from a user without needing to press enter? And then it just spat out some, you know, I've never seen code like this before. I don't even know what this library is, MSVCRT. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna take this. So I pasted it into my uh, terminal and then I, I hacked with it a bit, but I'll explain later exactly what I did. But you can see like most of the code is still here. If this thing, uh, you know, get the character buffer, you know, raise a keyboard interrupt if you want to leave, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that was pretty cool. And then I said, so write me an async HTTP request like I was talking about earlier, because I don't, I don't want to wait for a response. It just slows down the terminal even more. So then it spat out this. And I said, cool, let me take this. So that's what I did. I just kind of pasted that up here. Uh, send an async request. I don't care about printing anything to the terminal, so I deleted uh, this stuff. Um, unless they send an invalid command, I did want that, so I kept that there. Uh, and then this whole concept of you know having a main and everything, I, I kept around. And then I pretty much just like merged these two blocks of code. So I have my main function here, which I just call uh, right here inside of a keyboard interrupt exception handler. So the input chars, I got that from here. Uh, and then pretty much, uh, so this is all in a loop, right? So if this random library dot kbh it, uh, or I guess keyboard hit is what that means, uh, it's gonna get the character, check if it's a control C, if it is exit. Otherwise, it's gonna add it to this uh, list of characters, print the character, I don't know why ChatGPT added all this other stuff to the print statement, but whatever. And then uh, I have a loop here for the asynchronous HTTP request, which you know I just got from here. And then instead of main, I have a function called send robot command, and I just give it the character that I get from this non-blocking uh, terminal um, snooper, so to speak. And then we have my send robot command. I check if it's valid WASDA or Q. I have my ESP drive API endpoint, which is just the endpoint that I got, uh, or it's just the URL that I got from the ESP32 log. And uh, the server I wrote has a drive endpoint. And then if you, if you do drive and then like W, it goes forward, for example. So what I do is I just add that character to the end of this string, uh, send the HTTP request, uh, non-blocking, so asynchronous, it just sends it, doesn't wait for any response. And then, uh, yeah, so, you know, the only downside with this is if there's an issue with the server, this doesn't care, right? It just shoots off HTTP requests and goes along with its day, uh, which is exactly what I want. But yeah, so that, that's pretty much uh, how I was able to write this so quickly. Like, I'm not joking, this took me like five minutes. And it really just kind of illustrates the power of, each, of, uh, of ChatGPT. You just ask it three questions and, you know, you hack around a little bit and you have a completely working uh, Python program. So now I'm gonna quickly run through the ESP32 server that is running on my robot. Uh, so this is all embedded firmware, which is pretty cool. And the ESP IDF framework, which stands for the ESP uh, IoT development framework, has all these uh, libraries that you can use to do various things like set up a web server, uh, which is exactly what I did. So it gives you uh, a little more control. It's a little more powerful than just using Arduino and a little more, uh, I guess, professional. So uh, to begin, we have the app main, which is what the framework expects. It, you know, it just does some uh, simple logging. Then I have these two functions here to configure the LED and the motor control pins. So um, this is just like basic GPIO init. Um, so up here, I have uh, all the pins defined at the top. Um, these are just the GPIO numbers and we do like a reset and then we set the port direction so it's an output. And I do that for the motor and I do that for the LED. 
Um, so if we continue on in main, we do some other stuff here that's just pretty boilerplate from the uh, from the framework. It just checks flash and um, some other, I guess, server stuff. I, yeah, I literally just copied and pasted all of this, this whole block here from the framework. Uh, but good things to keep note of are that we are registering our connect handler and disconnect handler. So the connect handler and disconnect handler um, set up and tear down the uh, web server. So it, when we're setting up the web server, we call the start web server function. And the start web server function is where you register all the endpoints to your web server. So in my case, I set up a bunch of endpoints for driving in various directions. I also have the blink, um, blink endpoint. There's also a hello endpoint, which uh, just returns hello uh, to whoever calls that endpoint. Uh, but the ones we care about are, are the drive endpoints. So if you call the URL and then drive and then slash uh, W, uh, you are going to be driving straight. So notice how all these endpoints uh, have their handler set as the get handler. So that means when you call this endpoint, uh, we're going to be running this handler. So let's go to uh, that handler, or let's go to the definition of this handler. So you call this handler, this is the request data. Um, so by the way, most of this code is boilerplate from the framework, so I'll just explain what I had to change to get this working. Uh, so this is all boilerplate. I did not write any of this code copied straight from the framework. And same with this. This is framework code. Uh, framework code again. So this, okay, this is where I started writing code. So if the request URI is uh, blink, then what you're going to do is run my blink function. Okay, well, so what does my blink function do? It just toggles my LED, which I store uh, the state in this uh, local variable. Cool. So as you can probably imagine, I do similar things with the other endpoints, except in this case, we're going to be driving straight, turning left, driving backwards, turning, uh, turning right, or stopping. Uh, and uh, all these functions do are just set the GPIO of my motors. So it's a pretty simple program, and the you know, actual effort needed to put this together was pretty low because most of it is boilerplate, except for the GPIO functions and uh, writing some pretty simple logic here, and then creating the endpoints and registering the endpoints in the server. And just like that, we have uh, an embedded web server running on the ESP32 that is controlling the motors, and uh, that will allow me to drive this robot all around my house, connected to my Wi-Fi, so much fun. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this demo as much as I did. I had a lot of fun uh, building this thing and I have a few more ideas to make it even better. So stay tuned. And uh, here's a video of me driving around my floor just for fun. All right, see you guys later. I have the WASD keys and the robot underneath me and we are just going to make it go forward. Q, make a turn. Q. Make it go forward. Q. Let's make it go right. Let's try to time it. And for the grand finale, we're back at home.